Policing the vast British Empire characterised the operations of the army between the First and Second World Wars. Serving on the northwest frontier of British India, on the border of Afghanistan, always carried a risk. Eric Moss was 86 when interviewed, and his recollections of serving on the northwest frontier are an interesting insight of an army life in the days of the empire. Well, when we went up to uh, the frontier in 1935, the Duke of Wellingtons went up with 400 men, HLI went up with 400 men, but we went up with 600 men. The Duke of Wellingtons, I could be wrong with this, but this is by repute. The Duke of Wellingtons returned 250 men with malaria, the HLI returned 150, and we, with a far greater strength, only returned 80. Our anti-malarial discipline was good, morale was good. But I remember myself, I caught malaria on the frontier, but I didn't go sick of it. I remember when I bent down, I felt as though my brain was falling out. I would wait for the pain to subside, stand up and it would start all over again. Well, when we vacated the frontier, the first day's march was mostly across open country, which wasn't too hard on the feet. And then we hit the Tarmacadam Road leading into the shore and it was every step jarred you right through the skull. And we camped the night, and the following day, it was very, very hot weather, and I was at the back with the ammunition column. I was a pipe corporal at the time, you see, but on, on the establishment, there was no such thing as a corporal, so I was in charge of the ammunition column at the rear. And the MO was at the back, was sitting on his horse just in front of me. And we'd been marching for a few miles when a Major Cunningham came to the rear, leading his horse, and lying across the saddle was a soldier. And he said to the M.O., and he said, I've put young McCartney on the back of my horse. He's all in. He can't go another step further. But I don't want him to fall out and let all these Indian soldiers see him. Uh, so he said, if he's fit, and we come to the gates of the shore, get him off the horse, dress him and make him march past. That was that. Now, this was happening all up and down the line. I couldn't see it all myself, but I heard about it, I knew what was happening. I know that in one case in the signal platoon, a chap, one chap was carrying his pack, another was carrying his rifle, another carrying his equipment, and he had a chap on either side of him supporting him by the arms, dragging him along the road. And this fellow said, oh, I'll have to fall out. And Freddie Graham, later General Freddie, with a black and white moustache, he was a signal officer at the time, and he turned and said, he said, let me hear you say that again, I'll knock your bloody block off. <laughs> and, well, when we came to an Indian, the side of the road was thick with Indian troops that had fallen out. And when we reached the gates of Peshawar, these men were taken up and dressed, and then there were pipe, pipers, only five of them, standing at the side of the road, playing Highland Laddie, all these men straightened out. And we walked into the HLI barracks, and on the square was a medical team, and 25 men were admitted to hospital right away with temperature of 105. 